Hi everybody, welcome to Recovering Autism, The Scourin' Solution. This is our chapter reviewing acetaminophen toxicity. Now, most of us think if we grab a bottle of a children's medication in the drugstore, it's going to be safe for our child. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Remember when four out of five doctors recommended Marlboro cigarettes? Well, now we know that cigarettes can be harmful. And we're starting to learn that acetaminophen can be harmful even if doctors recommend it. Before we get into the facts and the science, understand that this medication has many names. It's called acetaminophen, which is known as the brand name Tylenol. In other countries, it's called paracetamol or the brand name Calpol. I'm going to be using the word acetaminophen in this video, but the science applies to any of these names. Now, acetaminophen is recommended by almost every pediatrician in the world to almost every child in the world. Most of us may think that drugs are tested to make sure they're safe before we use them. While this is the rule now, decades ago in the 20th century, those rules weren't as strict. Acetaminophen was grandfathered past those safety regulations. Grandfathering means that a drug used before the safety rules could still be sold without upholding to the new safety guidelines. Well, that's a problem because the scientific studies analyzing the safety of acetaminophen had a median of two days. They only looked for side effects for two days. And more importantly, none of the scientists looked to see if it caused autism or ADHD or other developmental delays. The people who sell acetaminophen don't seem to care if their drug causes autism in your child or they would have tested their drug to ensure it was safe for your child. They didn't. Every hospital has an emergency detoxification protocol for acetaminophen toxicity. They know that if someone swallows a whole bottle, it can cause extreme liver damage and they have the antidote. Why are we giving children a medication that needs an antidote? Why are we giving a medication that could have the potential to harm a child? While most doctors are concerned about liver damage with acetaminophen, they aren't aware that brain damage occurs before the liver damage. So it takes a lower dosage to cause brain damage before it causes liver damage. Some doctors are telling us that this is perfectly safe, but we know it's poisonous at certain levels. So should we use it or not? Time for the science. This study combined 16 different studies that suggested acetaminophen contributes to developmental problems when pregnant mothers take it. Another study from the prestigious Journal of the American Medical Association Psychiatry stated that when acetaminophen was found in the umbilical cord after delivery, autism rates are up to four times more likely. This next study showed pregnant mothers that took acetaminophen long-term had 100% higher odds of having a child with autism. Wow. That's a lot of science. But what if you didn't take acetaminophen while pregnant, but your child took it when they were young? Well, one study suggests that acetaminophen given after birth is responsible for 40% of cases of autism. 40%. I stop and ask myself, why doesn't my pediatrician know this? Why does my doctor continue to recommend a medication that we know causes brain damage at a certain dose? Even researchers from Duke University published in December 2022 Based on this evidence, it can be concluded without any reasonable doubt that some babies and children are at risk of acetaminophen-induced neurodevelopmental injury and that postnatal exposure to acetaminophen in those susceptible babies and children is responsible for many, if not most, cases of autism. Let me say that again. Scientists from Duke University state that acetaminophen is responsible for most cases of autism. Now, we've known this for a while, because a study from 10 years ago noted that autism rates started increasing at the same time that acetaminophen started to be used with circumcisions. Now, with all of this research, you may start to be wondering, how does acetaminophen cause autism? And what can you do about it? It's important to know that the brain is separated from the rest of the body by a very tight barrier known as the blood-brain barrier. This barrier only allows certain things in and out. We don't want infections or toxins getting into the brain. Pharmaceutical companies are investigating ways to get their drugs through the blood-brain barrier because some medications need to work on the brain directly, and it's very difficult to get through that barrier. So they started performing studies combining their drugs with acetaminophen to see if they could get more of the drug through the protective blood-brain barrier and into the brain. 
One study clearly showed that the integrity of the blood-brain barrier is altered following a single high dose of acetaminophen. This allows increased uptake of substances into the brain. Now, if that study said one dose of acetaminophen can decrease the protective barrier of the brain, how many doses does your doctor recommend? Here's another study indicating acetaminophen can help increase drug transport into the brain by opening the blood-brain barrier. Now, this doesn't happen to everyone, so why could it have happened to your child? Genetics. We are all born with different DNA. We each have a weaker part of our DNA that makes us more susceptible to certain medical conditions, maybe cancer or diabetes or lactose intolerance, or problems with detoxification. Children who have genetic problems with methylation and sulfation detoxification pathways are more predisposed to the toxicity of acetaminophen. Science has known for a long time that acetaminophen toxicity occurs because it depletes glutathione. We have known, based on this study published in 1999, that blood-brain barrier dysfunction was associated with brain glutathione depletion. So, glutathione plays an important role in maintaining functioning blood-brain barrier integrity. Okay, science part over. Now what? I hope you've seen that acetaminophen has been around for a long time but never tested for safety when it comes to the brain development of your child. So we have no science on its neurodevelopmental safety, but we have a lot of studies about its toxicity and association with increased risk of autism. What do you do? Number one, throw out your acetaminophen. Whether it's called Tylenol, Paracetamol, or Calpol, throw it out. Since acetaminophen depletes glutathione, take some. Glutathione tastes really bad, like rot necks. Consider Spectrum Awakening Glutathione Cream. You can rub it on your child's feet before bed. It smells like rotten eggs too, but at least you don't have to eat it. Number three, do-it-yourself homeopathic acetaminophen recipe. Instructions for this are in another video later in the course. Thanks for watching this. Thank you for doing everything you can for your child. And together, we'll find a solution. The Scourin Solution.